this is Gina Robert from GearWire. I'm here at the Grammys, and I'm sitting with Phil Ramone. How do you feel about it now that there is no real solid delivery system in terms of making, you know, monetizing the delivery system as there were, was, you know, before the record industry kind of dived? I, my favorite answer to that is they had a 50-year run, at least. At least. So the paradigm was shifting. And if you're not shiftable, you're going to keep wanting to put the same idea out back and forth to the audience. There is no reason that a high, cool place in the department stores wouldn't have a department called music. And it's music is visual and music. I remember when audio guys would kind of, if you came in with this camera, they'd say, oh, it's going to interfere with everything we're doing. And in fact, it's just the opposite. It's, it's part of the culture to go forward. And it's 2010. If they had said this in 98, 99, which a lot of people did, and I was in the internet business, and people said, you're going to take, change the world's interest in music. And I said, no, it's going to change in the sense that maybe you call it a subscription model, maybe you do what Netflix does, eight bucks a month. Hey, if you've got 250 million people enjoying that, we have to change. I, I just saw a great interview with a guy who was head of Harper uh, Row, I guess it was, the publishing company. And, you know, here's Charlie Rose talking about the Kendall and all of these, the Nook. And I totally feel strong about it. I feel like I do about our music. I would love to get your interest to hear more than one cut. It's up to me to make it better. It's a, Chapter 4 is really where it gets going by Chapter 6. And I'd be happy for what used to be called an album, make six songs work. It's like a 30-minute show. Let's make those things work. Don't, don't overcharge. Get a multitude of an audience and deliver it really well. You know, teaching people not to steal something is, is something that came because something was too expensive. You know, I, I don't mean to get esoteric about it, but I said, if you take children three, four years old and you walk them into a, a grocery store and you say, by the way, you steal those loaves of bread and a lifestyle and everything else that goes on for the few that make great success. Going to a concert, going to a club, going to hear opera, whatever your choice is, you need to do more of it. But you also need a a, a learning ground which got taken away you know the early clubs are where you experiment you do two shows a night maybe ten shows a week to find your place and then record now everybody can make a record which is okay with me everybody can make a movie but they don't make them quite like James Cameron or someone else you know or Rob Reiner or whoever your favorite is at the moment so I, I truly believe we have to cultivate an audience. This is not a given. It was, and it did, and it survived. But now it's, okay, we've got to win you again. Broadcast has to be different. You know, you pay for what you get. If talk radio has taken over that, great. Where's the next phase? Where's the channel? Where's the choices? Our music on networks is pretty slim. So maybe we need a music channel. Kind of started in the MTV world when they did almost cartoon-like film with the music to make it entertaining. People are willing to listen and watch. Maybe for only eight minutes. That's okay with me. That's your attention span. It's not your attention span. It's just a variety of things. You get in my car, give me 10, 20 minutes of the latest, greatest I'd love to have an update of what's bubbling on the chart. Well, I'm a musical guy, but I don't mind it if it goes on the screen for the back seat that it shows the highlights of the week. I mean, I, now in New York City right now, I didn't think that anybody would do it because cabs are tough in New York. They multi-screen on tons and tons of cabs. Really? Yeah. I didn't 
just did an interview with a guy from ABC. He said, well, we supply stuff to the cabs. It's a show that airs probably at 2 in the morning with people like me on it, but it's in the cab. Talking about whatever it is. This young artist I just produced, Nikki Yanofsky, is going to be, you know, this, this, this. She's in the opening of the Olympics. She's amazing. So when you're in the cab, you're saying, oh, she is? Well, the nicest thing would be is that it plays 30 seconds, like an iTunes, of her. And wouldn't that be nice in your PDF, you know, just hit enter so I could hear more? You, you have to communicate. And when the guy said, there's 250,000 people seeing this, other people in the old world would say, oh, potatoes. That's small potatoes. But now it's a different story. I think it's, it's, it is the story of what we're doing. It's totally the story of why we should be, let's say, not, you know, humbled by the fact that it's changed. And, I, I, you know, it's 100 years ago. Audio hadn't even been a market. That's how close. 1909, 1910. It was the beginnings. It was a small kind of a record company, not really. You know, they were going, but it was mainly opera, operetta. And you think how far 100 years in the world we live in, you know, when I was in the technology, doing more and more of it, supplying the interest of getting an audience to call in and see us on the, on the internet, and we, we developed this DVD, basically, so you could see the story of the songs and how they came about, and a little documentary that went with the disc. Uh, the commentary at the time, of course, was, it was so slow, you know, 64 kilobits, was really slow. A five minute song could three hours, you know, for the average guy, and then, the, you know, are you Mac or are you PC? You know, and I said, someday, they're going to have to talk to each other. When that starts, the speed of it was coming, like, you'd wake up every morning and they say, oh, we got, we're up to a T1 or a T3 speed. We're on the way. I mean, you look at the new upgrade, even on the iPhone, just the regular, it's doubled its speed since a year ago. And people think that's really important. I keep saying, why aren't you, why aren't we creating an earbud that is so phenomenal sounding so I can sit in, in my little cubby hole with my little computer, whatever that's going to be, and let it sound good? Because that is the communication. And the word enter, keep, uh, try it, you know, you walk into a store, you can try on anything. And there's nothing wrong with it, you know, I don't think.